Welcome back to Gooderman on Monsters Adventure. Last time we went through the first level of the game and got acquainted with most of the mechanics. There's some stuff I forgot to mention last time. I'll get onto that when we get to the actual level portion of the game uh, this time around. I still really dislike you, but I am going to take you up on one of those offers. Alright, so, uh, looks like we have enough to buy both of the upgrades he has for us right now. Alpha parts is... okay. So this is just a basic, I guess, pseudo-projectile attack, which can be done on, like... This says it can only be done if you're, like exactly at level one, but I'm pretty sure that only counts if you're like, you know, if you don't have any higher tiered versions of that attack, because there are tiered versions that each drill level lets you use. This one, I believe, yes, this is the one I was talking about last time, the one that I used to get all the pots when I want to just kind of get it quickly, basically. So, now we've got both of them. Hell yeah. That was indeed cool. You know what else is cool? Yeah. I knew that'd get you. Anyway, since I didn't show off much of a house last time, let's check things out here. So yeah, this is a nice little place. It's like a two-story little house, and um, apparently Perrine is the only one who has her own room for some reason. I guess Grandpa just didn't expect to have any visitors here. Yeah, Pamela will have a use later on, but for now, no, don't really worry about it. <laughs> ah, there you are. Yeah, um, interesting enough, Green is the only one who has a bedroom in here. And yeah, this is kind of a small little place for what ends up being a house, honestly. This is like... Like, I've seen apartments that look like this, actually. Like, where the second story is, like, the bedroom, and then the bottom floor is, like... Well, I guess not exactly like this, because there is, like, a separate kitchen, whereas this one's, like... It's basically just a studio, but with a bedroom up top. And, uh, actually, where's the bathroom? Yeah, I don't think I ever noticed that before. That's, uh... That's something. Well, anyway, let's go find the other duders, because that's what we've got to do. Oh, uh, you're not supposed to be here. Uh, that girl you just saw, um, she is something you get as a bonus for beating the game on any difficulty, at least in a PSP version, and then she was added back in for this version. I believe she was added in for a PSP version anyway. I don't think she was there in the original game, because I know when this game first came out on Steam, there was like a bug where she would show up and she wasn't supposed to show up here uh, until you beat the game. So I'm pretty sure that's something added in, because otherwise I don't know how they have that bug happen. Hey, it's Poco.
Well, um, I think... Oh, there's Puka over there, but, um... Before we do that, let's head on over here. Just talk to Disc, see what he's got. So, uh... Real quick, first things first, we want to get this gas mask pretty soon. We don't need it for anything in the first set of levels we're going to be doing, but we're going to need it by the time we get to, like, the third set. We're also going to need this, so I guess focus on getting those pretty soon. And for upgrades, I did check off screen and, uh, yeah, ten. Ten pieces of junk. Now, I do want to get that uh, goggle upgrade before we get into the second level usually, but it would take a little too long to do that, and I don't want to do too much off-screen stuff while I'm recording. So, uh, we're probably going to go through level two without doing that. Depending on how things go. I think that was everyone. You're back. Monster Village has been completely destroyed. And it was just starting to feel like home, too. Now where are we going to sleep? That's not the worst of it. Much of our world is covered in dark mist. What is dark mist? This world is a reflection of what's in our hearts. With our village destroyed and our friends gone, the world is unstable. The dark mist comes from our sadness and worry. What do we do? We have to get our friends back and rebuild Monster Village. Then our world will stabilize, and we can live in peace. But those phantoms are strong! We have the drill! Yes, as long as I have this drill, I can fight them. You're the only one who can! You're our only hope. Please, help us. Please? Leave it to me. You won't be able to go into places covered by dark mist. You have to start by searching the areas you can get into. Okay, I got it. Alright, so, um... Oh, the cursor just went on screen. Uh, fun fact, actually, about the cursor. So, um, when this game was first coming to Steam, uh, Mastiff, the English publisher, uh, had that as a selling point that the game was going to be 60 FPS on this version? It's not. But, technically, the cursor is. So technically, it is still 60 FPS, and if you, like, go into this game with some kind of frame counter, it will tell you it is 60 FPS because of this cursor, even though the game is, in fact, not 60 FPS. It's logged to 30. Which is a bit weird since it was originally a PC game, but I don't know. Video games are weird. Anyway, um, last time we went through here, we didn't actually get the level clear reward, and we want to get that, so I'm going to do that off screen real quick, and I will meet you guys then. And here we are, so this room's new. Uh, something I should mention is that that level was actually very slightly different this time around. Um, but the only way in which it really matters is that uh, one more enemy has armor than the others, and the guy just outside this room has a little bit more armor. But otherwise, it's the same level. Anyway, um, we got this last room here. Every level in the game has a little last room where you can just kind of drill into things if you want. 
don't really need to, but hey, it's a nice little easy way to get some more money if you feel so inclined. And there's always one little extra item here. If you already have the item from this level, then it's going to just be a healing item or something. And that's an S++, hell yeah. That's slightly better than doing okay. Now, I would show off what that does, but I can't actually do that since I don't have the dude we want to show it off to. Those clouds moved in fast. Do you think it's going to rain? Those aren't clouds. That's dark mist. Dark mist? This is bad. I have to get to Monster Village. Hey! Wait up! Uh... What? <laughs> that, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, I haven't seen that cutscene before, so I'm going to assume that, uh, um, honestly, I don't know. Anyway, here's the meter corridor of the Potato Ruins, the second level of the game. Um, while we're here, a few things I forgot to explain last time. Um, somehow I forgot to mention the music, which, like, if you haven't played any Falcon games, pretty much all of them have good music. Like, in fact, that's the main thing that a lot of people know them for, is that, like, all their games have good music, even the lousy ones. Yeah, um, and this game is no exception. It has pretty good music. It's kind of different from what they usually do. It's a lot more, like, poppy and, you know, a lot less rock-influenced or folk-influenced or whatever than... A lot of their other stuff is, but that's mostly just because this is a more cartoony tone than they tend to go for. But, um... I still really like music in this game. Some of the later music is actually stuff I like more than this, and, uh, hang on. Ah, damn it. Well, I think... Come on. You can attack me, right? There we go. Alright. Just wanted to get that off the way real quick so that I can use this cookie. Because in this treasure chest is another cookie. And you can only have like three of each item at most. So keep that in mind. At least for each healing item. I don't know if there's, like, one specific item that you can have uh, more of, considering it's in exact quantities of, like, s I think there's six total in the game. But the healing items you can only have free of, because reasons. Yeah, and another thing I forgot to mention... Mostly just because it doesn't really matter for the most part, is this game has very light rhythm elements to it. So, like, basically, if you hit an enemy to the beat of the background music, it actually, like, does a critical hit, and that's how it determines whether you get a critical hit or not. Now, it's really hard to intentionally time it, though, so I tend to forget it's there a lot of the time. Especially since most of the time I end up doing it on accident. I'm like, it's one of those mechanics where actually trying to take advantage of it just makes the game harder. It's like... Uh, what's a good example? There's like this one mission in Jack X, I remember, that like... 
basically you're trying to avoid various different duders, and as a kid I didn't know that for a good little while. So like, I thought you were just supposed to run into everyone, but you were only supposed to run into like the blue cars or something. I don't know, it's been a while since I played Jack X. But like, after I found out what you were actually supposed to do, I actually had a lot more trouble with that mission, ironically enough. And that's kind of the same principle here. Uh, okay, whatever, he's too far away now. I got a level down, that's the first time I did that, this whole thing. That's rude and bad. Also be careful here, because while you're rushing to get past that dude, it's easy to miss some of these pots. Hey, you gotta level up again. Might as well drill into these so that I can get my level back up again. Because, like, it's not as strong as the others, but, like, if you have your level to the maximum, you do, like, have a little bit more of a bonus to it. Like, and by the maximum, I mean, like, the entire bar is maxed out. So, like, uh, right now I'm at level 3. If I just, like, do an attack, nothing really happens except a normal attack. But if I have the bar full to its maximum, a little projectile drill comes out. Oh, god damn it! I'm trying to get this duder. Hey, that's... that was fast. Alright, so... I'm gonna get up here real quick, because there's treasure over there. Also another treasure over here. Uh, this is a mystery bag, hell yeah. Alright, so, mystery bags, I'll explain when we get back to the village. Probably. Or next time, maybe, because the next video is going to be a boss level, and... Bosses take, like, two minutes in this game, at the most. So I'm gonna have to find some way to stretch that video out so you're not getting, like... One second's worth of content. Oh, hang on. How about these guys? I think over here... Yeah, there's a little hidden one here. Huh? Did I already get that? Oh wait, never mind, I'm dumb. That's the thing that was upstairs. Yeah, I always forget that that's upstairs, because I usually like drill into that first. Anyway, over here, hey, you actually get to see it this time. I think the PSP version, like, very slightly censors that, which is funny since it's not remotely explicit. Like, I think they just make the... Like, the shining bit? The shining bit, yes. I think they just make, like, the bright light a little brighter. And, like, cover a little more. As for why, I don't know. Like, a lot of games from when Falcom was a PC developer have, like, very minor bits of censorship in them. Like, uh, E6, when that got ported to consoles, had all the blood effects removed, which is funny since E6 is, like, not even particularly explicit compared to a lot of other things. Like, out here, the PS2 version got a T rating. Like, even despite them removing the blood effects, and the blood effects are basically just T for teen blood effects. So, I have no idea. Like, maybe the regulations are a little more strict in Japan. So, I think, like. Well, actually, that wouldn't even make that much sense, because I'm pretty sure VE's games go for the equivalent of a T rating in Japan, too. Now, 
And I know I've seen games with a lot bloodier content in them get T or, or get B ratings, I guess, in Japan. And I guess I can see it a little more with Gudeman, because this was going for the Japanese equivalent of an E rating. And yeah, it got that. Oh yeah, this is somewhat annoying. Uh, getting with bats, specifically. Uh, taking care of these guys ain't at all, because they're like nothing. Yeah, like, getting the bats, you kind of have to time this a little, and it's mostly just a waiting game. I don't know why they bother with that, but it is what it is. And here's the main reason why I was saying you wanted to get the goggles upgrade before you head in here, because uh, once you upgrade the goggles once, you take no damage from being in the water, whereas right now, if I were to go in the water and be even remotely below the surface, I would start taking damage, and the main reason you want that isn't just so you can like cheese this bit of platforming, but it does help that. But um, also because there are enemies in the water, uh, if they'll show up, excuse me? Why would there be enemies in there on no- oh, never mind. now they're here. But yeah, uh, I should mention, by the way, trying to hit enemies in the water in this game is a nightmare, at least until you get one of the other drill upgrades. So, like, basically what you have to do is you have to, like, rely 100% on the lock-on. Oh my god, come on. And you have to rely on them being just close enough to the surface to where you don't, like, cancel out your attacks before you reach them. I had surprisingly little trouble with that that time, but... Yeah, these tend to give me trouble a lot of the time when I start up a new playthrough. Whoa! Yeah, that's some really precarious platforming there. Oh hey, it's that guy. He has an axe. That axe, by the way, does count as a piece of junk, so if you, like, once you kill him, or if you, like, just grab the axe after drilling it off of him, uh, you can use the axe as a piece of junk. And also, you can, like, grab the axe while he's, uh, like, you can drill into him and then grab the axe, and then he will do much less damage to you, just because he doesn't have his weapon anymore. How's about that? Uh, no. Just making sure, because I know there was one in the, uh... Oh, something. I'll get to that when I get to that, I guess. Anyway, I believe that is the end of this level. And hey, check it out, it's a boombox. Uh, real quick, let's just drill in here. And, let's go. Boombox. Ah, only a mere S plus this time. What a shame. So yeah, um, I have no idea how long that was going for, so I'm gonna do a save real quick just to see. Oh wow, that was actually like longer than I was expecting, oops. Uh, about 10 minutes of that's probably thanks to this though, so yeah. Oh, well, eight and a half, but you get what I mean. It's not too long. So I will um, see you guys next time when we go see what all that stuff we just got was about. For part three of Guduman, A Monstrous Adventure. See you then.